Smash has a lot of data. Enough data that you can find multiple sites dedicated just to cataloging all of it. All that data is just the start too. Once you get in game, you've got to grapple with the endless use cases for each data point. Basically, you got to know how your character works. And that's not nearly as simple as it sounds. With so many different things you can learn about a character, it's hard to know just what you need to learn. In this video, we're gonna cover things you need to learn about your character, whether it's a top tier, mid tier, or one of Bowser's weird children. But also keep in mind, this list isn't meant to be comprehensive, so there's gonna be a lot more you should learn. This video is more for beginner and intermediate players. If you're really advanced, there's a chance you already know the ins and outs of a few characters. But if you wanna stick around for the jokes and throw in some of your recommendations at the end of the video, we won't stop you. And if you wanna get one-on-one -on -one coaching and courses from pro players, we won't stop you you from heading over to ProGuides.com either. With lessons from MKLeo and Esam, there's even more to learn over on our website. Alright, that's enough intro, let's get to the good stuff. Before you can take stocks, you gotta make sure you can keep your own, and you're not gonna be able to do that if you can't recover. At first, just getting to the ledge is gonna be enough, but as you and your opponents get better, you'll need to know more. Specifically, you gotta know your recovery ranges. Pretty much every up special has all kinds of different ranges and angles that you can exploit. Knowing each angle is important, especially when they all have different vulnerabilities. For just about every recovery, you want to know magnet hand angles. Magnet hands are when your character is nowhere near the stage, but somehow clips into it anyways. Magnet hands usually happens when you just ram your character's face into the stage near the ledge and then… boop! You're safe! Pretty much, each recovery has different angles and distances that will trigger the magnets. If you know these angles, you could recover a lot more safely. It's gonna be harder for your opponent to two-frame you or edgeguard you with this method. But if you miss the sweet spot where you clip to ledge, you'll SD, so be careful. On top of magnet hands, be sure to learn your character's aerial momentum and dodges. Each character has a different range on their air dodge and jump. Lots of players can miss these details, but they can mean more to recovery than your up special. For example, Krom has less horizontal recovery moves than Little Mac or Ganondorf, but he's still got a much better horizontal recovery than either of them overall, because boy can he jump. If you know every way your character can recover, you can change up your patterns and keep your opponent guessing. That's crucial if your character has a weak recovery. You gotta pad that bad recovery with early air dodges to gain distance or perfect angles to avoid two frames encounters. And if you wanna beat a character, you should learn their recovery ranges and options. If you know where they need to get to for their safe recovery, you can cover that spot yourself. That's gonna make your edge guards a lot more effective. Another big part of keeping your stock is punishing people for hitting your shield. If you want a good defense, you gotta know your out of shield options. Believe it or not, this is one of the easiest things to learn. The best out of shield options are fast, cover a lot of space, have low end lag, and don't require you to drop shield. You don't want to have to drop shield, because in ultimate, it takes 11 frames, which is pretty slow. So, a good out of shield option is usually a good aerial, up smash, or up special, because you can jump up smash or up special without dropping shield. If you want to find your reliable out of shield option, just check the frame data. How fast is it start up? How many frames of end lag does it have? How big is the hitbox? Does it cover both sides of the character? You can find tons of resources on this stuff. The best out of shield options tend to be 5 frames or less, like Lucy Lucina and Game & Watch's up specials, but anything under 10 frames is solid. Lucina's up special is pretty great, but its range isn't that big and it has end lag, so you can bait it out with a safe move and whiff punish it. There's a flaw in pretty much every character's defense. Pretty much every character. <coughs> Game & Watch! <coughs> <coughs> The third part of defense is the scramble. That situation where you're scrambling to do something, anything, to hit your opponent before they hit you. For the scramble, you've gotta know your best panic options. Panic options aren't exactly graceful and won't fix all your problems and disadvantage. But they're a great way to get that monkey off your back. Literally. Like an out of shield option, a great panic option is fast and covers a lot of space around you. Two really good examples are Snake's Grenade and Duck Hunt's Can. Both of these moves come out so fast that they can interrupt combos that aren't airtight. Their explosions cover all around the character too, and these options work in the air or on the ground. Most characters have at least one decent panic button, but some don't. It's still good to know a character's limits. 
That way you can just focus on dodging or DI'ing out of danger. It's also pretty smart to know the panic options the opposing character has. When you know your opponent's panic buttons, it's a lot easier to predict what they'll do and find a way to beat it. And here's the thing we all knew was coming. Ultimate is a fighting game, so you better know your combos. But it's not just any fighting game. It's Smash, where combos work in complex and positional ways. In Smash, it's not just enough to know your combos, you gotta know how they work. Lots of Smash content will tell you the bare basics of a combo, like move X into move Y into move Z. But you need to know how the combo reacts to the opponent's percent and DI, as well as how to space each of your moves. For example, a lot of aerials will lead to combos, but only if you do a late or falling hit and if you fast fall the hit. Krom can get a lot of small but very useful true combos off a single hit neutral air. So that means Krom has to delay the activation of his neutral air a little and fast fall as he hits so just one hit of the moves come out. Then he can use a till or even a smash afterwards. When you find a new combo, don't just take it for the moves you see on screen. You gotta take that sucker apart in training mode and see when you gotta fast fall, when you gotta activate the move, and how close or far from your opponent you need to be to follow up. Then, on top of all that, you gotta try it in real games and see how other players DI. To cap it all off, you gotta learn percents and weight classes. Most combos only work in a certain percent range, and that range will change based on how heavy the opponent is. As a rule of thumb, your combos are gonna work for longer stretches against big opponents with big models, and they're gonna work at lower percents and for shorter stretches against small, lightweight characters. But you'll find a lot of tricky exceptions over the 70-some characters. Combos and damage don't mean much if you don't know how to close a stock. And in Ultimate, not closing the stock is super risky given the cheat the rage mechanic. So naturally, you've got to learn your character's common kill confirms as well as raw kill options. Pretty much everything about combos also applies here. Kill confirms often involve precisely timed dragdowns or reverse aerial rushes or tricky timings. And on top of that, a lot of them are conditional on your opponent's percent. So, if your opponent gets too high percent for your kill confirm, you're just gonna have to land a raw, strong move. The best raw kill options tend to have quick startups, large hitboxes, and ways to set your opponent up so they fall into them. Snake's up tilt might be the best example. I mean, just look at this nonsense. Like, what is that? And Snake can do a ton to set himself up to land an up tilt by using his down throw or his ledge trapping. You are inevitably going to be hit by this move. It is, you are, you will die. We will never have a guide that will help you avoid this stupid move. If you're plugged into the ultimate community, then you've heard a lot about safe moves. Probably too much, honestly, but they are really important. If you haven't heard about safe moves, it's pretty much any move that's hard to punish in neutral. An example is Game & Watch's Down Smash. This Down Smash has such a large hitbox and low end lag that it's hard to respond to. Of course, in some situations, like against a character with a quick-ranged option, Game & Watch's Down Smash isn't safe. What's safe and isn't safe often depends on matchups and what the opposing character can do to respond. But you can get a good idea just by seeing which of your moves have big hitboxes and low end lag or landing lag. As you get more advanced, you can see which moves can be attack cancelled, reducing the lag significantly. The other half of safety is whether or not a move is safe on shield. If a move is safe on shield, that means you can hit an opponent's shield and still have time to shield, jump, or do something to avoid getting counter hit. Safe moves on shield tend to be quick, disjointed moves that cause a lot of shield stun. You can get a good general idea of what's safe based on its value on shield, which you can see at ultimateframedata.com. A negative value means that the opponent has that many frames to react after you hit their shield. So, negative 20 on shield means your opponent has 20 frames to act. A positive value means you can move before your opponent can do anything. Safe moves don't have to be positive on shield, they can just be a small negative value, about negative 4 or under. Safe moves will vary based on matchup, but lots of characters have consistently safe moves, like Roy or Krom's jab or Zero Suit's neutral air. Try to find your character's safer moves so you have options you can use without pushing too far into your opponent and getting punished. For the last tip, we've got something a bit more niche, but just as important. At its core, every Smash game is about movement. Yes, even after Nintendo took out wave dashing, Smash titles have had unique movement techniques, many of them character-specific. Some of them can be game-changing and unique, like Palutena's warp or teleport cancels. Others can come from established mechanics, but matter more to certain characters, like how Lucario uses B-reverses with Aura Sphere. Or like how Pikachu's up special Quick Attack works as an approach, whiff punish, and annoy the hell out of your opponent tool. A lot of characters in Ultimate have little bits of unique movement that really add up. 
Mastering these pieces of movement doesn't just make you play better, it makes the game feel better. When you can move well, you unlock different ways to play out certain scenarios and surprise your opponent. But we put this tip last because not every character is gonna have unique movement tech and they won't always be game changing. I think doing gun dashes with Kirby is still pretty swag though. That's it for this video. You might be wondering about things like playstyles, game plans, and neutral patterns. The macro game is really important, and it's something we teach in a lot of our character guides. But this time, we wanted to focus more on specific micro things. If you want to learn even more about recovery, safe moves, shield options, and combos, we've got videos on all of those. Just check out our channel, or the links in the description below. And if you want even more help, head over to ProGuides.com, where we've got lessons from the best in the game, coaching sessions, and more.